Welcome everyone and thank you for joining. This is the 16th webinar, which means I've been doing this for three years now. Somebody just asked me earlier today and I thought, oh, I think I did it. I've done it for a year and a half, maybe two years. So as they say, it's amazing how time flies. And I want to have I'm going to pass it over to Ivana in a moment to give you some technical points, though I do want to say an official good morning, good evening, and uh, even I think good afternoon for some folks. We've got people dialing today in today from France, Germany, Russia, Spain, the US, Luxembourg, UK, Serbia, the Czech Republic, did I say Lithuania yet? No, I think we just have Naringa from Lithuania and Japan. So we've got people who are gonna be in from all over. And with that, I'm curious to know if you wanna put your name and as people join, we'll ask you to go ahead and write in your name if you haven't already. I see it looks like so far everyone's done that. So right now we have Ruth, Naringa, Sabine, Olga, Kim, Kate, Dilia, Diana, Anna, and Ivana and I. So welcome everyone. Ivana, you want to step in and give us some tech info? Hi everybody. A few things for you to note tonight or today or this morning. This call is an audio only and the session will be recorded, so if possible, please find a quiet spot. In order to keep the quality of the line high, please use a headset and mute your microphone when not speaking. With so many of us working online now, you may be very familiar with all this, though I'll be putting the instructions in the chat box nonetheless. For those of you just joining, please rename yourselves using your first name and the city country you are dialing in from. That would be great. That's it for now. Back to you, Amy. Okay, thanks, Ivana. Oh, yeah, and thanks for mentioning the thing about the city. I guess I should have put mine in too. Uh, Ivana, if you can rename me and just add Veve there, that'd be awesome. So today's call is going to be semi-interactive. There's going to be some discussion, there'll be some coaching, and we have some specific communication challenges that we're intending to look at and it may be that we go off on some tangents because you have a something that just happened six hours ago during a team meeting, who knows? Though, uh, feel free to bring any challenges you have. And with that, I want to, especially because I've got a couple of people who are joining for the first time, I wanna go over the predator prey partner model for you. So this will be a review for some of you and it will be new for others. So this model of predator prey partner is the communication model my sister Pat Kirkland developed. And essentially what it's based on is how much respect we're holding for ourselves and for others. So when there's no stress, pressure, all is well, we're able to usually be partner meeting, I'm holding high respect for myself and high respect for the other, all is well. The problem is under pressure, stress, perceived threat, crisis, or just if we're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, we're likely to either go predator or prey. The predator is holding too much respect for herself and not enough for others. So I might say, you know, I, I see Ruth is here. I might say, uh, Ruth, Ruth, no. If you would just, Ruth, just let me explain, will you please? But Ruth, I'm not finished. And now Ruth is going, whoa, <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> so a predator often doesn't realize she's being predator. You'd be shocked at how many people I've talked to. <clears throat> I explain the model to them and they say, oh yeah, I really go prey under pressure. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that's not the perception I'm getting. And because it's a perception game, that's what counts, that's what matters. So, it's all based on body language, voice, and words. Excuse me one second. <clears throat> now the prey under pressure holds too much respect for the other and not enough for herself. 
So if Ruth and I are having that same conversation and I'm being a prey, I might say, but Ruth, I, I know, I know, I know Ruth, but I, can I, 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 could I, could I just explain? I know, I know, I know, I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to. And here's what's interesting, even with Ruth, who's a really nice person, that could trigger her to become a predator towards me. So that's why this stuff matters because it will determine how people perceive you and how they treat you and the results you get in life. And this goes across all areas of your life, personal, professional. So one of the things that's really useful for people to notice is when are they going predator and when are they going prey? What triggers that? For me, sometimes, you know, I usually in my past and I control it better and better. I used to be mostly predator though. You know, I could definitely dissolve into a puddle of tears and become prey if I'm really tired or really hungry or something. So you want to pay attention to that. And something else that's really, really cool about this model, and people think, oh, well, Amy, don't both people have to be playing partner for it to work? And the cool thing is the answer is no. Only one person has to be holding a strong enough frame for it to work. So let me explain what I mean. So if, say, Olga and I are having a conversation, and let's say under pressure, Olga, I don't know, I'm not saying this is true or the case, I'm saying Olga might go predator. And if Olga's being predator with me, what I do is I hold a stronger frame of, sometimes you might have to be alpha partner with a predator. And that's making, that's motivating. Um, let me explain it differently. Olga is likely to recalibrate her own behavior to stay partner with me because the high level of respect I'm showing for myself gives very high value to the respect I'm showing Olga. And Olga will wanna keep that coming. So she's likely and motivated to recalibrate her own behavior. If under pressure, Olga was to go pray, I would adjust my behaviors. I'd still stay partner. I'd hold a strong partner frame. I'd adjust my behaviors a bit. Maybe I, instead of being keeping my body really still or calm and and having lots of pauses, maybe I would smile more. Maybe I would ask more questions. So there's a variation of the behaviors of partner. It's not one fixed specific thing. And it would make Olga, who was being a prey, feel safe and respected. So Olga is more likely to be able to shift into partner with me. So that is one of the things that makes the model so powerful. Because only you have to be holding the frame. Now, is it more fun and more pleasurable and more enjoyable when the other person is being partner? Oh, heck yes. And this is not dependent on them. It is, unfortunately, dependent on one's ego, <laughs> which I have discovered many, many, many times. So with that in mind, now that we've talked about that intro, and this is good, especially for my friends who are joining me for the first time, feel free to participate, whether we're going to be talking about your own challenge or someone else's. And be brave and volunteer to be coached if you're in, the, in a good place for it. And you may even be doing some writing. So have a pen and paper nearby or put it on your phone perhaps. Now the questions, you can do, you can do a couple of ways. I don't know if Ivana said this or it's just in the chat. If you wanna take yourself off mute and interrupt me, this is one of the skills I teach people, practice interrupting. So unmute yourself and just in a nice, nice strong voice, Amy, and then give me a second or two to stop what I'm saying. That would be a great muscle to flex this evening. Another way you could do it is 
put a, a note in the chat with your comment or question because Yvonne is going to be monitoring the chat box. So the what I was saying earlier is most people who are on the webinar have attended either a workshop or an intensive training or a keynote that I gave. So for those of you who are joining for the first time, it's possible that not everything's going to make sense. It's possible that you're not going to agree with everything. The good news is you don't have to. The, what I will ask you to do is to simply stay open to the ideas. So rather than look for reasons why what I'm suggesting can't work, I'm going to invite you to put it yourself in the space of curiosity, say, hmm, so I should stop apologizing so much. Hmm, gee, you know, Amy, in, in my culture, you know, that's very calm and that wouldn't work. That's what I hear a lot. Oh, that wouldn't work in the Russian culture or that wouldn't work in the British culture or that wouldn't work. And so when you hear yourself thinking that or maybe even saying it, I want you to just invite yourself to hold that uh, space of curiosity and say, huh, perhaps it could. And then what I'm going to invite you to do is whatever the behavior is I'm suggesting is practice the behavior over the next coming weeks, like even up to six to 12 weeks to get good at the skill. Maybe it's getting rid of the word, but maybe it's speaking louder. Maybe it's letting yourself be interrupted. You can tell these are behaviors like, ouch, what, what do you mean get rid of the word, but that's impossible. <laughs> So get good at the new skill. And then once you have some awareness and a certain number of amount of control over it, then decide if you want to keep it or not. And that might take two or three months to get to that place. So I, let's see, what do I want to talk about now is to tell you about the different communication challenges. You may recall there were three that we talked about. One is to admit and recover from a mistake. The second one is handling power plays. And the third one is negotiating. So I wanna to check to see if, let's see. I don't see my Japanese friend. She wrote in a situation. Ivana, if she joins us, be sure to interrupt me and let me know because I want to give her a chance to share what her issue is. Oh, absolutely. Will do. And the thing I want to talk about, um, the handling power plays. So for several of you, that was the a number one thing you wanted to work on. So I'm curious to know who has a challenge, an issue, whether it's in your personal life or professional life, and you can change the names of the guilty parties. Who has a situation that you would like to bring forth and to discuss? And actually what I wanna do is this, I wanna give everybody the chance so it doesn't have to be just, it can be on any of these things, admit and recover from a mistake, handle power plays or negotiating. Everybody feel free to unmute yourselves if you want to speak. Thanks. Emil, could you please uh, explain a little bit what does it mean, the second option? Diana, thanks for joining. And uh, the, you mean the second one handling power plays? What, is that, yeah. what do I mean by that? Yeah, yes, please. Okay, thanks. So a power play means when someone it's usually well they could be doing either they're playing either the predator or the prey like here's a great example i um i am now a, running a radio show i do once a week one hour shows and a few days ago let's say today's tuesday so this was just monday monday afternoon i was talking with a guest i'm going to be interviewing in a couple of weeks and she's this very lovely woman and she used to be my, um, she was my teacher 20 something years ago. And so I've always put her on a pedestal. And I kept gushing about her when we we're talking and, and I was sort of 
what was it? she caught me doing this it was fantastic she, she called me on it in this lovely gracious gentle way to say amy i don't see or I, what she did say is i see us as peers so because she, we had been in this um in uh, an imbalanced relationship where she was my teacher many years ago I had continued to put her on that pedestal. And so even as we were talking about it and preparing for this radio interview, I was still a little bit like the, the starstruck student. And I was um, suggesting that she had a wealth of knowledge that I didn't have. And so after about 15 minutes of talking, we stopped and we, she made this observation and she said really clearly how she perceived us as peer, to be peers. And it was, I was so thrilled that she noticed it and she named it because I wasn't conscious that I was doing it. I think I was wanting to, and I think many of us do this, we, we sometimes, do it as a compliment. And I sometimes see this when I meet people and after maybe at a, con a women's conference or something. And it's something about when you're on stage and people see you on stage that they tend to put you in this higher status and then they put themselves in a lower status. So Diana, that's an example of a power play, you know, sort of the, the, the gracious, kind flip side. And it's not effective either because if she wasn't such a lovely human being who knew herself so well and had her ego in check, she could have taken advantage of that. And maybe she would have gotten impatient with me or annoyed or maybe um, she, she would have gotten very directive or said, listen, I have to leave this call in five minutes. I really don't have, you know, instead she, we were able to name it and identify it because we we're both in the same world and we both know about power plays and she was help, able to help me see that I was um, doing this imbalance thing. Now, another example of a power play, which is much more unpleasant is when someone is in a dominant role and mistreating the other person. It often happens when there is a difference in positional power. And it, that doesn't have to necessarily be just in the work environment. That can often happen when you have someone in a role that you deem as inferior, like, you know, do, you know, and, and I think we're all guilty of, of power plays on both the receiving and the giving end. Like, when we when we're going to meet somebody who's really who has a lot of positional power we tend to give them a lot of respect and eye contact and we let them interrupt us and we're very polite and generous and then we get in the taxi or we're we walk into the restaurant or and we don't necessarily treat that person the, the taxi driver or the waitress with the same level of respect. Now that's sort of a innocent way that the power dynamics get played out. So the power play is really how, generally the challenge is we're in a position where someone else is being dominant or aggressive towards us. And how do we re, um, recalibrate that? Diana, I wanna pause here to see how that lands with you. Well, that makes perfect sense for me. And actually, I have even the <laughs> situation where this happened to me like a couple of days ago. Would you be willing to share us, uh, share the story with us? Yes, yes, I would like to share. So uh, I, um, I was in the meeting with... Uh, Diana, my... thanks for letting me interrupt. Sorry. Before you continue, I want to prepare you because... I'm pretty sure you we have not met before is that right? No, I was in one webinar before and that's it. 
Okay, good. So you you're get you have a little bit of an experience with the way I. So you notice how I may interrupt you. I may ask you to say it in a more concise way. So just be prepared that there there may be some back and forth here. Sure. Great. Okay, please start again if you would. Okay. So, um, I was in the meeting. It, it is a scenario from my work and I was in the meeting with uh, new joiners in, in my company and together in the same meeting was my manager and I, am, I was the one who um, explained everything for new joiners uh -huh. but uh, my manager uh, after some sentences she just uh, she says no, you are wrong. This is uh, how we work this and Ouch. that. <laughs> but please continue. I am not uh, interrupting you anymore. Oh. And, and that happens like five or seven, like a lot of time during that meeting. And then I was thinking, maybe I am too sensitive as a mm. woman or is it, was it actually like uh, inappropriate behavior? So Diana, I want to first, first of all, you did a beautiful job giving a very high level synopsis. You didn't give too much detail. You didn't repeat yourself. And so bravo for being very concise. Thank you. Second, and now I want to first tackle your, that inner critic, that inner critic who suggested that maybe you're too sensitive as a woman. And this is a, um, I would call this, this is a sabotaging thought. And it, and many of us, maybe every, all of us on this call might could be able to relate and notice that we, so notice how you tend to question yourself first. Oh, I must be too sensitive. And to that, I will say, maybe. And probably not. And so often now, I'm not saying your manager said this, or if you go and talk to your manager, I'm not going to suggest that she's going to say, oh, you're just being sensitive, though, be prepared, she might. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you decide to, we're not even, you know, this is different ways to handle this. And one would be that you have a delicate conversation with her, though we'll get there in a minute. So I want you to really, um, it, and here's the other thing, Diana. If give me the name of a good friend of yours. First name. It's Naringa. Naringa. Is she Naringa who's on the call? I think so, yes. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to you as well, Naringa. Okay, so what if Naringa told you, hey, Diana, I, you know, I was giving this introduction to new joiners. My boss interrupted me. She said I was wrong. She kept interrupting. What if Naringa said to you, I think I'm I'm just being too sensitive? Then I, I would say you are not too sensitive. It was yeah. rude. Yes. So um, it, it may have felt rude. It may have not. We don't know what your manager's intentions were. Maybe, believe it or not, maybe it wasn't her intention to mm. be rude. Um, and nonetheless, it still felt that way to you. And that also counts, even if it wasn't her intention. So isn't it interesting, Diana, how quickly you could come to Naringa's defense, right? Yeah. So this, this is something, this is great for everyone on the call. This is called flip it to test it. And so let me back up. I'm gonna go off on a tangent, Diana, and then we're gonna come back to this. Um, I have, this is comes from a TED talk from a woman, Ivana, we really have to get the name of that woman because I refer to her so often. She's a woman who works in HR. She did a TED talk. And what happened was she, a, a male co colleague came into her office and said, hey, can we talk about, can we have a business conversation about me getting a raise? And the woman said, sure, we can have that conversation. And third, Two hours later, a female colleague walks in and says, hey, can we talk about uh, having a business conversation about me getting a raise? And the woman said, yeah, I guess. And she was horrified that she was willing to and had no problem having the conversation with a male colleague and hesitant 
with a female colleague. And wh what she realized was the story she made up was, oh, well, the guy is the head of his household. He earns the money, so he needs the money more than this woman. She didn't know if that was true or not. And this woman, the HR woman, happened to be the breadwinner, as they say, the, the one who earned the money in her relationship. So she was horrified to realize that she had this inner bias against women, that she's a woman, that she's an HR. And so she came up with this very simple concept of flip it to test it. And so I often have people use it in the world of how they react to others. And so often when I said earlier today, how when someone acts like a prey, other people start to act like a predator. So I have a friend who said, Amy, you know, I, I, you know, I have these two wonderful children and sometimes my son who acts like a prey, I go predator on him, except I don't go predator on my daughter. And so I explained this concept of flip it to test it. So what she does now is when her son does something and she reacts and she feels her inner predator reacting, she flips her son for, and she substitutes her daughter. And she says, okay, if this was my daughter in this situation, how would I respond? And she sees that it's much easier for her to stay partner with her daughter. And so Diana, what we've just done is we've taken that concept of flip it to test it. And we've had you apply it for yourself because many people, women, even maybe more than men sometimes can be too hard on themselves. So I'm not saying you should never challenge yourself or hold yourself accountable or stretch and push, push yourself. I think these are wonderful qualities to, as I say, hold the mirror up to see, is there something in this situation for me to learn? And there may still be, Diana. What I don't want is for you to be excessively judgmental or critical or harsh or unfair to yourself. And so this flip it to test it is something that you can do. If you hear yourself in the moment, you question, oh, is this me? Say, well, if this happened to Naringa, how would I respond? Make sense so far? Makes perfect sense, actually, yeah, thank you. Great, okay, so now that we've tackled that part, let's look at this thing with your manager. Um, my sense, Diana, is if you, like you said, if we saw you observe your, your manager do that to someone else in the room, you would think it was inappropriate or unacceptable, unprofessional, yes? Yes. Okay. So, and, and you could interrupt me, Diana, at any point, because this may not be where you want to go with this. So the first thing is, you, and this is a great example of how you need you, anybody, whenever we're nearly dealing with an issue, we need to take time to step back and reflect. Sometimes that might be three or four days. Sometimes that might be three or four weeks. And I love that you brought it up, Diana, because now you're having an opportunity to get a, another perspective. And anybody who's on the call, you're also welcome to put in the chat or to take yourself off mute and give your opinion. Because you might not agree with what I have to say, or you might have something else to add in addition. So, as I'm going through it, don't hesitate to interrupt. So my feeling is when this behavior doesn't get addressed, it continues. And I, if, I, if you were my coachee, Diana, what I would say to you is uh, this needs to, um, I would encourage you to have a delicate conversation with your manager. And it would, say, it would be something like this. And by the way, Diana, we're recording this call. So you're welcome to take notes or you could just go back and listen to this part again. And so I'm really just kind of creating this in my mind as we're going. I'm, if I was in your shoes, I would prepare a conversation to go to have with the manager and say, and, and let's call her um, Egla. Egla, I 
Um, I'd like to, and you would either do this by email or phone call or video chat. I, I'd like to have a, a debrief with you, or I'd like to check in with you regarding the new joiners meeting uh, from last week. Let me know when you have time to do that. I'd like about 45 minutes. So you're, you don't want people to be surprised by the topic. Now, and she might already have a clue or she might just have no idea how uh, you're feeling about this. So first you ask, let her know what the, the general topic is and then set up a time and then, you know, make sure, like I said, 45 minutes, it may only take you eight minutes or 12 minutes to have the conversation. Though you don't want to say, would you have a couple of minutes? You don't want to underestimate or, or minimize it because it feels uncomfortable. And if you're done in 15, 20 minutes, you know, a bonus, then you both have extra time to, to do other things. And then I would let her know, um, Egla, what I noticed, and you may very well want to have notes in front of you, Diana, because it's really helpful to say it in a very precise way. Um, and when we're under pressure or stress, we t sometimes babble or we say it differently in, in a less than effective way. So some phrases that are useful to say, you know, um, Egla, I'd like to talk with you about a couple of things that happened during the meeting that were frustrating for me or upsetting for me or concerning or confusing or surprising. So whatever emotion you were feeling. And, and you want to go really slow, Diana, because, and you may even in the email say, I'd like to talk about um, our, our exchange during the meeting. So even give her a little more detail of what you want to talk about. So it's not so much of a surprise. And so you're going to give her a little bit of information, and then you pause to let each piece in, for her to digest it and sink in. And this, when you go really slow like this, it's much harder for the other person to get defensive. And then you can say, um, Egla, when I was presenting information to the new joiners, at one point you, and you would want to probably not say interrupted me because that's that sounds antagonistic. So you may say something like you spoke while um, while I was speaking or you spoke at the same time to correct me to explain that what I said was not accurate. Now, Diana, the thing is you don't want to get too caught up into whether she was right or wrong. And, and I think there may be two issues here. One is that she interrupted you multiple times and you didn't have that agreement. Another thing is that she, that she said you were wrong in front of them, which might be, might have been necessary because you don't want to give the new joiners the wrong information though. Um, what I, th I'm wondering Diana is if what bothered you was the packaging of how she did it, not what she did. Is that accurate? Uh, yeah, that's, that's correct. Good. So that's going to be very important for you to decipher that, to explain it, to say, um, Egla, I, th the fact that you corrected me in the moment made perfect sense because we, I wouldn't want to give them the wrong information. That's not my concern, or that's not what was frustrating for me. What was frustrating for me was that it's, it, uh, it had an edge to it that sounded very um, harsh or critical, even though I'm guessing you didn't intend that. So when you say things like, I'm guessing that was not your intention, you can even start the sentence. So Diana, I'm guessing this was not your intention. And the way it was said sounded um, very um, uh, aggressive to me. And again, I'm, I'm guessing that wasn't your intention. So, so, and then you may also, even before you start this, say, ask her permission. Egla, would it be all right if I give you 
feedback on how I perceived the exchange. Because here, Diana, you're letting her know you want to give her feedback. You're asking her permission. She's most likely going to say yes, which means that she's going to be more open to it rather than you just hammering it in. And you're letting her know this is my perception. It's not about right or wrong. And you got to be prepared for her using that, what we talked about earlier, that possibility of, oh, Diana, I think you're just being too sensitive. So you want to be prepared for that you non say and you you do something called active listening you can go check on my website there's a short video on active listening and active interruption um ivana would you put the link to the videos from the website in the chat so people can access those videos when they want to and okay will do and so Diana, so, you know, she may say antagonizing things to you. So you want to slowly, calmly nod, repeat what she said, even if you don't agree with it. And then you repeat back and Egla, I understand you, it seems that I'm being sensitive. Your perception is I'm being sensitive. And from my opinion, it didn't feel appropriate or professional. And my request is that you interrupt me differently in the future. So this way, you're not saying, you know, she can have her opinion, but you're saying, nonetheless, it didn't work for me. This is what I would like different. Now, what I'm throwing at you, Diana, it's a lot. It's, it's very intense, you know, and you're, you would be challenging or confronting a senior person to you. So you really have to sit with this to see if this is the right thing for you to do. And you might have to rehearse it multiple times before you jump in and decide to deal with that, to, to if, if you want to have that conversation. Maybe even rehearse it with Naringa and she can give you input. And you want to have very, a very specific request what you want to be different. And then you may also say there are two parts. One, that you, you know, the packaging of how you said it that you um, said you weren't gonna inter interrupt again, and yet you it happened multiple times after that. You know, so you might have to uh, really give the specifics of what didn't work for you. So I wanna pause there for a moment. I'm gonna check the, um, the notes here and Diana, feel free to comment. Well, it it will be definitely challenge, challenging for me because I never did that before. Yeah. But um, that um, idea that uh, go and not to find who was right and who was wrong. Yeah. I like that. And the most important thing and the most thing which I, I like the most was about <laughs> I don't, I request you not to interrupt me this way, something like this. Yeah. It's like a very specific. Right? Oh, Diana, I'm really happy to hear you find this useful. Now, one last thing you just triggered for me. When you make the request, slow and calm, and you ask, is that something you can agree to? So, you know, you don't stop after you make the request. Get her to say yes or no. And if she says no, her reasons for that most likely, so, so she will say yes. And then Diana, you're still not finished because then you wanna add what I call the safety net. And the safety net is, Agla, thank you so much for agreeing to this. And I know that it takes time to change behaviors. If you accidentally do it in the future, I'll, let, I'll be sure to let you know. So Diana, with that final statement, you're saying, I will hold you accountable to what you've agreed to. And then you have to do it. You don't do it right in the moment when it's happening in front of other people, you go and you talk to her afterwards. Is that making sense? Well, for me, it's like that plan. Say it again. It's like a plan for me, it's, it makes sense. I think I can do that. Excellent. Great. And I see in the chat, we've got the name of the woman from that TED talk. If anyone wants to listen to it, you just go to the TED 
Kristenpressner.com website and type in Kristen Pressner. And then, um, so Tammy knows that their recording would be there. And yeah, Kim, interesting question. Yvonne and I both noticed that uh, we were likely to get a full house of women only, which it is tonight. I don't see any men on the call. And um, so if you had any comments or thoughts about that or, or questions, because I often do trainings where it's women only, because a lot of these skills of assertiveness, we really, as women, uh, struggle with being okay with them. So I'm happy to entertain any questions about that. Yes, thanks, Amy. Uh, was just a reflection if it um, shows off that women here tonight are more tend to find some compromise in being good partners. Uh, <laughs> whereas, yeah, I don't know if we are all in our position tonight, um, women in life who would like to, yeah, be just be good partners and um, how this gentleman feels. But it's, yeah, it would have been interesting actually to know more about the other way it's view. <laughs> um, so some of the things you said triggered a thought for me, Kim, and feel free to respond to them or if it's, if, if I'm missing something. When I do these trainings, what I find is that globally, between people going predator or prey, they're much more likely to go prey. And this is true for men and women, not just women. So my belief is there's fewer, even though it feels like there's more predators in the world, it's because they're usually in higher hierarchical positions. And that's, and they're able to make more lives miserable. So the perception is there's more predators out there. So even for men, they, they go more prey than predator. Um, and one of the other things I notice is that people who are showing up as predator are doing certain prey behaviors, except when they, which is, remember what I said earlier, if you're showing up as a prey, someone uh, may go predator on you. And someone who's a true predator will react back as a predator. So it's a fight fight. So, um, the, and the other thing I wanted to say, Kim, is that when I do these trainings, what I find is women, you know, it, it's not in the trainings that I find this, I believe that this is a global phenomenon. Women and people of color have less leeway to misbehave. So I want you all to imagine a continuum. And in fact, I'm gonna turn my camera on for a minute. I'm gonna do a stop share and I'm gonna start my video. Okay. So can everyone see me? Yes. Hi. Okay, thanks. So the continuum I'm showing you, predators is this, this extreme, prey is this extreme. And all this in the middle is partner for men. This is partner for women, and this is partner for people of color. So what this is saying is the world is not fair. <laughs> we knew that already. That is nothing new. Though why these behaviors, and maybe Kim, this is what it goes back to, is these behaviors are even more essential for women and for people of color because they're going to get missed. You know, the predator here, prey here, they're going to get labeled a biatch if they're being very as assertive as a man sometimes, or they're gonna be labeled a wimp, you know, whereas a, a guy who's just being, he's just being assertive and the guy who's, oh, he's just being easygoing. Whereas the women and the people of color are getting judged more harshly. So even though that is unfair, the benefit is that by holding yourself to a higher expectation to push yourself to be partner in every chance you get, you're building stronger muscles. And those muscles are then 
are going to help you in those situations. So it's going to be easier and easier for you to stay partner, regardless of the circumstances, because you've been training and building your partner muscles. So I'm going to stop the video and curious to know how that lands for people. And I'll do a screen share here. Um, Ivana, can you hear me? Yes, Amy. Um, can you allow me to screen share? Oh, absolutely. Thanks. There you go. So Kim, how works. about, does that land for you? Yes. Okay, that's good. Yes, thanks, Emmy. Um, Great. That's good to hear. What in particular does it, it does it surprise you, or does it confirm what you believe? No, it it confirms indeed. Mhm. Mm okay. So we're gonna have a few more minutes, and here I'd like to spend a moment talking about this um, one issue around negotiating to a role play with friends or family. So I want to share with you, this is something that comes from nonviolent communication. It is an incredible user-friendly way to um, help two people negotiate a conflict or it's a model you can use with someone else. So what I'm going to ask for is two people who would be willing to do a simple role play. And the way it'll work is one of you is going to be, um, you're, you're, let's say you're doing a, the role play is you're talking to a friend and you have an opinion about wearing masks and your friend has an opposing opinion. And I will be the mediator in this conversation. And we're only going to do it for, you know, five minutes or so. So who's feeling, and you don't, you're going to, whatever you have to say, it doesn't matter. You don't have to really have any brilliant argument at all. You just share your opinion. It's not about being right or wrong. It's just, you have a different opinion from your friend. So who would be willing to do the role play? I need two people. Uh, I would like to be one of the two. Okay. And who is that? Deanna. Okay, Deanna. And who's going to do the role play with Deanna? Be brave. We're looking for five minutes here. It's going to be, you'll be feeling. I can do it. Hi, everyone. This Hi, who's, who's that? Marqueta. Marqueta, thank you. Okay, so Marqueta, would you like to be pro mask wearing or against mask wearing? I don't really care. So whatever you tell me, I can be pro. Okay, Diana, is that okay? Can you be against mask wearing? Sure. Okay, so let's pretend you two are friends. You're having a conversation on the phone and um, and, and you can be a little bit passionate and you can be a little bit, you know, obnoxious. Okay. So don't be polite and, and respectful <laughs> because that helps to get a reaction. And what's going to happen is this, the way this works, and this is what I explained. So thank you for both of you talking, coming to talk first. Marquetta and Diana, who's feeling like you want to talk first? Who's feeling, and this is not Amy, the coach, this is Amy, the mediator. So we're in the conversation. Diana or Marquetta, who's feeling like you really want to be heard first? Go ahead, Diana, if you want. Maybe the against masks <clears throat> will be more. <laughs> well, Marquetta, you, you, let's pretend you're already in the role play. Oh, so okay. Say, Diana, you can go. Hi, Marquette. Diana. Hey. Thank you for agreeing to go first. And here's what I'd like you to do. Diana, I'm going to have you share your opinion and I'm going to interrupt you at some point. And then Marquetta, 
I'm gonna check in with you to make sure you heard exactly what Diana said, okay? Sure. Great, okay, Diana, go ahead and begin. I don't understand that mass panic that ev everybody wears masks, like all the people in the world needs masks and nobody thinks so environment, environmental issues doesn't care anymore. Nobody cares about it. They just use that masks and throw that away like Diana. in the streets. Thanks for letting me interrupt. Marquetta, what did you hear Diana say? So I heard Diana was saying that the mask, that it's incredible that everybody's been wearing masks and that it has a huge impact on the environment and that it's just incredible that it's happening. Uh-huh, thank you. So everyone listening in, Mar Marquetta did a pretty good job of summarizing, we think, okay? We're gonna check now with Diana if that's what she meant to say. Sometimes people will start to put their opinions in, though Marquetta kept it pretty neutral. Diana, is that what you meant to say? Yes, it was very correct. Okay, great. Diana, why don't you continue? And in addition to that, even the president of the United States, he clearly declares that mask is not like a mandatory thing for us to have, but nobody actually listens him and he recovered from the disease so quickly. So maybe that masks even don't, we don't need that even, but everybody still wear, wear, wears the mask. Diana. And Thanks. Um, let me check in with Marquetta. Marquetta, what did you hear so far? Um, that even the president of the U.S. himself <laughs> um, is saying that there's no need to wear masks and therefore it's even more unbelievable but that people are not following his guidance and still are wearing masks. Okay, now one little thing is I might do some side coaching there. So Marquetta, I heard a little bit of a laughter. Now, of course, that's you doing the role play. Though if in real life you had done that, um, that could get interpreted as sarcastic or you, know, you think she's being ridiculous, something like that. So that would be something that we would pay attention to. All right, so um, Diana, is that about right, what you said? It was exactly what they said, yeah. Okay, so Diana, is it okay if we pause here and hear from Marquetta? Yes, sure. Okay. All right. So Can now I just ask a question, Amy? Sorry yeah. to interrupt. No problem. Um, or thank you for letting me interrupt you, I guess. Good <laughs> I should job, say. Marquetta. <laughs> um, if, like, given the fact that me and Diana are supposed to be very good friends, is that not okay if I make it a little bit more sarcastic, this conversation, is, in all due respect to her, of course, Wait, but... Good point. Um, yes, thank you for that, Marquetta. Yeah, if you knew you guys were just having a relaxed disagreement, probably that would be absolutely fine. Yeah. I know that even if I'm really with close friends with someone, if I'm feeling defensive or agitated or upset and I hear that laughter when I'm not laughing, it would be, I'd probably get defensive. Sure, yeah, it makes sense. Right, so you're right. There might be times that's perfectly appropriate. Let okay, me just pause guess, for a second. Kim has a question. Would you say or not that the increased communication via emails or chat influences the way we behave as predator, prey, or partner or our perception of others? Um, yeah, yes, I think, uh, Kim, that, and then Marquette, we're going to come back to you for one more minute. Um, with, I think when people are being brief, with emails, text, chat, we don't take the time to say, hey, Sandra, hope you had a good weekend. That li those little things or thanks a bundle that sometimes we can sound a bit too harsh or short or impatient. Um, also, when we're doing it in a second language, I know I had a boyfriend who said to me, gosh, when you write to me te in text, you sound like you're in a bad mood all the time. <laughs> And I was like, really? And that's because my French was so bad. It was before voice dictate <laughs> that I probably kept it really, really, really brief because I didn't have the patience to make sure I was conjugating correctly. 
Um, so that's a good point, Kim, that we have to pay even more attention with the different mediums we use. Okay, we're gonna uh, wrap up in just one minute. Marquetta, go ahead and give your one minute sentence, then we're gonna have Deanna respond back. All right. Yeah, Deanna, um, I hear you, I hear you. Um, I guess for me, the masks make a little bit more sense because we can see that less and less people are being hospitalized while we impose on them wearing masks. So it seems like it does work in terms of spreading of the virus. So I have to say I'm quite pro masks at this point. Okay, Diana, Diana, what did you hear? It's health for people to wear masks. And Marquetta, is that was essentially your message? Um, yes, I mean, my message was that statistics show that it helps, so I guess, but I wouldn't probably go with the health card, but yeah. Good, so you see this is a perfect example why we wanna double check that what the person heard is what the other person meant. So you would mm -hmm. go back and forth and you might be negotiate or not negotiate, yeah, you, yeah, you might help facilitate a negotiation that lasts 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, who knows? Though that's a very simple form that you can use. Yeah. Okay, thank you ladies. Appreciate your willing to step up and, and do the role play with us. Now, as we're wrapping up, um, Ivana, can you give us the date for the next webinar? It's gonna be February something, I can't remember when. And Absolutely. I was just about to interrupt you. Um, it is February the 9th, okay, same great. time, so 7 p.m. Central Time, Central European Time, that is. Perfect. Thanks for that. And guess what, everyone? I am now launching my online leadership presence course. It's been five months in development. It is a rocking course. It's, we're really excited about it. And so this is now available to people. There's open programs. So if you wanna send your, your partner, your boss, your colleague, if you wanna take it, feel free to reach out to me. We'll send you the information on that. We're gonna be running ones in uh, probably um, looking in the next coming weeks in early, mid-November will be the first ones we'll be taking off. Now, if you want more information, feel free to check out my podcast on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, and you can also check out, uh, and that and that you can connect with me on any social media, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Carol Communication Coaching. And as I mentioned, I've recently started launching my radio show as of the beginning of September. So you can check that out on any podcast channel and you just type in either Amy Carroll or you can type in Partner Up with Amy Carroll. And if you have a partner success story that you would like to share and you would like to be interviewed, please reach out to me, set up a time, and that would be one a podcast that I will record. It usually takes about 10 or 15 minutes to do the recording. As a thank you, I will offer you a half hour of complimentary coaching, a little bit like you experienced tonight. And you'll, you'll see from the chat that you've got some video links to feel free, check those out. There's more on my website. And finally, everyone, I encourage you to go out there and be the best partner you can be. Take care, everyone. Mm -hmm.